News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. Peter Dubois is off tonight. Well, first this evening, power crews have been out all day trying to get the lights back on after the storm last night. Some areas were hit particularly hard by the high winds and rain. Those winds knocked down trees and limbs, which in turn caused the power to go out. At 5 p.m., Verson was reporting more than 2,000 customers were still without power. Over 1,000 of them are in Hancock County, which recorded wind gusts of 60 miles per hour in some places. Verson says the hope to ha they hope to have electricity restored to most customers by around 10 o'clock tonight. Central Maine Power was also reporting more than 2,000 customers without power. Most of them are in Lincoln and Kennebec counties. Well, in light of all the weather we've had, let's see what else is coming our way with the first check of our forecast. All right, Beth, thank you. Happy Thursday. Your first weather is brought to you by Saliba's Rug Cleaners, Maine's largest for over 70 years. Let's start here temperature-wise today, back up into the upper 30s to low 40s. Tomorrow, though, it's going to be even warmer around here as we have warmer temperatures on the way. The advisories are falling off now. It's still in here, though, is a wind advisory west of the region. And, of course, wave heights out here still approaching 10 feet into tomorrow morning. All right, so the wind is dying down finally after wind gusts yesterday near 50 to 60 miles per hour. It's still out of the west, sustained at 10 to 20, but this will die down some more tonight with those wind gusts only near 25. A couple of flurries and a few sprinkles out there today. These will fall apart tonight. We'll have a very nice night tonight and a very nice day for tomorrow as there's just nothing in the west of us now, but there will be. There's more rain in the forecast over the weekend. Our forecast tonight, though, is decreasing clouds and low temperatures down in the 20s. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth? All righty, Jeff, we'll be waiting for it. And in the meantime, a Deer Isle man and his girlfriend have been arrested on a slew of drug trafficking charges following an MDEA investigation. The agency says 42-year-old Dexter Bray and 42-year-old Heather Davis were both arrested on Wednesday and charged with aggravated trafficking of fentanyl. They say Bray was involved in a prior incident in which he was found with three firearms, 10 grams of fentanyl, and more than $3,000. That led to a search warrant for the couple's home, where investigators found 23 grams of fentanyl, 6 grams of crack cocaine, over $16,000, and 46 firearms. The couple was held without bail while awaiting an appearance in Hancock County Superior Court. Well, Maine State Police were called at the scene of a crash in Belgrade this morning involving a car and railroad equipment. It all happened on Route 27 in front of Hammond Lumber Company. A car driven by 83-year-old William Bachman of Smithfield was traveling south when he collided with a machine called a railroad tamper. As you can see in the pictures, the car sustained serious damage. Bachman was transported to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The driver of the tamper, 19-year-old Bryce Willett, suffered minor injuries. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. Well, a third person has now been arrested in connection with a Penobscot County drug trafficking investigation. 25-year-old Dylan Ireland is charged with aggravated drug trafficking. Earlier today, Maine Drug Enforcement Agents seized an additional 482 grams of fentanyl from a Newport motel. Two other people were arrested at the Maple Ridge Mobile Home Park in Corinna on Tuesday. Ireland's bail has been set at $10,000 cash. A Wade man is facing drug trafficking charges after several months of investigation into the importation and sale of methamphetamine and fentanyl in Aroostook County. On Wednesday, Maine Drug Enforcement agents went to Wade and searched the Gardner Creek Road home of 56-year-old Daniel White. According to MDEA Commander Peter Arno, agents found more than two pounds of suspected fentanyl, half a pound of methamphetamine, and over $12,000 in suspected drug proceeds as well as several guns. Arno says the estimated street value of the drugs is approximately $245,000. White is being held at the Somerset County Jail, where he is being held on federal drug trafficking charges. Well, switching gears now, Senate President Troy Jackson and Speaker of the House-elect Rachel Talbot Ross have announced plans to create a new Joint Select Committee on Housing. They say it's in response to Maine's ongoing housing crisis. The new committee's limited scope will allow members to focus solely on critical housing issues around the state. 
Senate President Jackson said, quote, the housing crisis in this state is not a southern Maine problem or an Aroostook County, County problem. It's a Maine problem. Folks all across the state are struggling to find quality, affordable housing options that are close to work and are suitable for their families. It's adding to our workforce, workforce shortage and making it harder for employees to attract workers. Maine Housing reports the housing market has outpaced average household income in almost every county amid a shortage of houses for sale. Well, Community Health and Counseling introduced a pilot program today that they hope will be a win-win for both landlords and people transitioning from being homeless into new housing. With money from Maine Housing, Community Health and Counseling plans to work as a middleman between landlords that offer properties to people in transition that are already working with organizations in the community to help them get into their own rentals. The goal is to um, have some financial resources to alleviate some of the barriers that um, prevent some of the landlords from maybe um, renting to uh, this population individuals who are currently unhoused and unsheltered. Hamilton says that the money can be spent in a number of ways to help bridge the gaps in the process to getting people in transition into new housing. Everything from security deposit help to fixing up properties so they can qualify for the program. Well, at the Maine Climate Council meeting today at Colby College, Governor Mills announced new climate investments that will help protect Maine communities and create good-paying, clean energy jobs. Matthew Jaroncic has more. We will be the generation that protects this precious place we call home so that future generations may live in a Maine that is as beautiful and bountiful as it is today. On the second anniversary of Maine Won't Wait, which is the name of the state's climate action plan, Governor Janet Mills set forth more than $6 million to help make Maine a clean state. First, I'm investing an additional $2.9 million for 91 Maine communities to benefit from our Community Resilience Partnership. Secondly, I'm investing another $2.5 million from my Maine Jobs and Recovery Plan in workforce grants to nine organizations in Maine as part of our clean energy partnership. According to Maine Climate Council co-chair Hannah Pingree, she says the four-year plan has goals that are far-reaching into the future with the intention of reducing emissions and to help combat climate change. The plan has sparked all kind of action all over Maine. So everything from a record number of heat pump deployments, energy efficiency, weatherization. Obviously there's a lot of work to do to prepare Maine for the kinds of changes we're seeing, but it's very heartening to see so much action happening across the state. And even in the midst of planning for a clean future, Efficiency Maine Trust Executive Director Michael Stoddard says these investments may not show their effects immediately. It's going to be a tough winter. I, I think everyone should prepare themselves for the fact that these high energy prices are here to stay for this winter. I don't think that they will last long past this year, but uh, we got to all do the best we can and pull together. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. The Maine Better Transportation Association held its 71st Maine Transportation Conference in Augusta. More than 700 transportation leaders gathered at the Civic Center where members connected on the latest transportation news and shared new technology. This is the first time the event has been held in person since 2019, of course, due to the pandemic. The theme of this year's conference was where challenges meet opportunities, Maine's unique transportation need. Maine Department of Transportation Commissioner Bruce Van Oates as it's important to highlight the significance transportation has in our everyday lives. Fundamental, everything we do every day, whether you ate breakfast this morning, it came on a truck or a train. Uh, you went to work today. Most of you probably drove in some kind of personal vehicle. It just affects everybody every day. It makes a huge difference, and this is a conference to highlight that fact. Van Oates says that even though he doesn't have an idea of next year's theme, he'd like to talk about the successes of Maine's transportation industry. All right, well, switching gears, this year's Festival of Lights Parade in Bangor will be going on as planned. There are concerns about rainy weather expected for Saturday, but the organizers say it's not going to dampen the fun. They're encouraging people to dress for the conditions to help welcome the holiday season in Bangor. It's rain or shine, and, awesome. and we totally respect it if, if a participant decides they don't want to 
uh, March in the Rain. Uh, however, the, the biggest challenge of rescheduling that we run into is, is staffing, primarily city staffing and of the event. The Festival of the Lights Parade will kick off at 4.30 Saturday, followed by a tree lighting ceremony in West Market Square. The Bangor Rotary Club is also holding a community lighting contest. There are 29 entrants this year throughout the Bangor region, and the winner will score $500 in cash. You can see a map of all the homes, so you can check out the lights for yourself by visiting bangorrotary.org. Sure, there are a few budding Clark Griswolds out there just waiting for that contest. Alrighty, folks, well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, Health Equity Alliance is holding their annual World AIDS Day gathering tonight, hoping to highlight compassion, history, and conversation. And Northern Light Acadia Hospital is hosting their second annual Lights of Life holiday tree lighting. We'll have those stories and much more when ABC 7 News at 6 comes right back. Did you know that it's possible to buy the wrong type of flooring for your home? Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional contractor, the experts at Don DeCal Mainwood Floors are here to help, offering solid pro advice from choosing the right material and color to installation. Don DeCal features the highest quality hardwood flooring sourced from lumber right here in Maine, from Maine traditions. Not only will you get a floor you'll love, you'll get a floor that will last. Don DeCal Mainwood Floors, buy from the best, forget the rest. Al, did you make that call? Honey, we already have Medicare. Why do I need to call? Alan, the Feldman said we may be able to get additional benefits with a Medicare Advantage plan right here in our zip code with zero dollar monthly premiums. Honey, what do you mean additional benefits? We turned 65, we got Medicare. That's all there is to it, right? I'm talking about Medicare Part C, commonly called Medicare Advantage. We have traditional Medicare, which is only Medicare Parts A and B, but not Part C. Wait. So not everyone on Medicare is a Part C plan? No. That's why we need to call, because there may be plans available with additional benefits that aren't covered under Medicare Parts A and B. We don't have a Medicare Part C plan, which covers everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits in Medicare Part C. What kind of extra benefits? There are great plans that may be available with extra benefits, like dental, vision, and hearing. Did you say dental? Yes, dental. Medicare Part C plans could include dental benefits that help cover routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, plus dental x-rays, fillings, gum disease treatment, and dentures. We need that. I'm calling. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans with additional benefits available that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. If you're on Medicare, you can call now during the Medicare annual enrollment period, even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. You don't get a plan with additional benefits automatically, so call to speak with a licensed insurance agent right now during the Medicare annual enrollment period. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C plan benefits benefits automatically. Call now for your free 2023 no obligation Medicare benefits review. Call 800-742-6905. 800-742-6905. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. Health Equity Alliance is holding their annual World AIDS Day gathering tonight with the hopes of encouraging compassion, honoring history, and encouraging conversation. This comes after the Ellsworth, after the Ellsworth City Hall reading of the 2022 World AIDS Day proclamation. When asked about the importance of the proclamation, advocates emphasize the need to educate. Nobody's thinking about the community living with HIV AIDS except for on these days anymore. And so the stigma builds, the education isn't there, we're not talking about it. So to dedicate a day of the year to say, this is a day we're going to think about it, we're going to talk about it, we're going to ask people about it, uh, is, is a very important thing. There's still a fight to be fought. There's still people to be taken care of. There's still our neighbors and loved ones and friends and family that still need our compassion and our thoughtfulness. And so it's something that's it's so wonderful that we've made progress, but it's nothing that's gone by the wayside. 
The World AIDS gathering will be held tonight from 6 to 8 p.m. at their office at 304 Hancock Street in Bangor. For more details, you can visit their website at mainhealthequity.org or visit their social media. Northern Light Acadia Hospital is hosting their second annual Lights of Life holiday tree lighting. Thursday evening, the lights lit up on the front lawn of Acadia Hospital in Bangor. Employees gathered to enjoy music and treats in celebration of the event. The lights on the tree can be purchased with various levels of donations to honor or remember those who have suffered mental illness. And the funds will support care provided at the hospital. Recognizing folks with chronic illnesses in our space, uh, but also bringing more attention to a very important illness. Uh, we saw that through COVID, obviously, uh, the importance of managing mental illness and really getting to our younger folks in particular. So this is about, this is as much as uh, not only recognizing those that we have lost, but also thinking about our future generations and, and making sure people know that we're here. Well, donations can be made at northernlighthealth.org slash Acadia Lights. Those who purchase lights will be displayed on the Acadia Hospital website throughout the holiday season. Members of the public can view a full video of the tree lighting on the Acadia Hospital's Facebook page later this evening. And still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, the Bangor Humane Society is trying to find a home for the last of three adorable dogs that were recently found abandoned in a storage facility but are clearly doing much better. And in sports, Maine women's hoops are back from a tough West Coast road trip and it doesn't get easier as they're preparing for Princeton on Friday. That story right after the break. Real Talk. Recent high school graduates get free tuition at Maine's community colleges. Enrollment is open right now, so sign up for classes this spring, summer, or next fall. Don't sleep on a free degree. Enroll today. I'm 82 years old, and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone in my, my arch. I came to Comfort Choose four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe, and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Choose for that. Hometown Health Center in Newport and Dexter wishes you the happiest of holidays. Come see us and have a healthy new year. Get your hearing aids at Dover Audiology in Dover Foxcroft. Better hearing brings us closer to the joys of the holidays. Happy holidays from Berg Activewear. See us for screen printing and embroidery for your teams, club, or gift giving. Visit BergActivewear.com. Filling out a wish list at Quality Jewelers means a whole lot more this year. Quality Jewelers will donate $25 to make a wish for every completed wish list. Help make wishes come true by simply filling out a wish list at Quality Jewelers between now and December 18th. Quality Jewelers will also donate an additional $25 with purchase of any wish list item. So don't wait, fill out a wish list today and help make the wish of someone in need come true. Quality Jewelers, Penobscot Plaza, Bangor. Hank's Husqvarna is your full line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to snow blowers, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hank's Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. Looking for a brighter future? Get started at Maine's Community Colleges. Spring and summer enrollment is open. So enroll today for low tuition, flexible schedules, and career-focused programs near you. Maine's Community Colleges. Discover the brighter you. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. back everyone thank you for staying with us we'll start on the hardwood Maine women's basketball is back home on Friday hosting a real tough Princeton team coming off of an even tougher West Coast trip and for the Black Bears they wouldn't have it any other way Ryan has the story 
New Maine women's basketball is coming off a long road trip where they had games against teams like Kansas and Gonzaga. And it's not getting much easier this Friday night as they're playing a Princeton team also getting national votes. We want to play really difficult teams to learn what we need to get better at before conference comes. And I just think every game we're getting better and learning um, differently, especially since um, Ann's gotten injured. The Black Bears have been without reigning America East Player of the Year and Simon since getting hurt against Yale November 19th. We just ad adjust, you know, uh, people have to step up and really fulfill hardships, hard roles that Ann did. But Coach Amy Vashon's silver lining is that this has given the team a chance to see where they stand. I think players are learning what they can and can't do um, and learning uh, what they, they can do best to help our team. Help has come from players like sophomore Adriana Smith, who had double-doubles against Northeastern and Niagara. Smith says she's just learning as she goes. I feel like just finding my confidence and knowing when to do what has been really a challenge for me, but I feel like each game it's becoming a little bit easier. Another player stepping up is freshman Sarah Tallon. The Wyndham native had her career-high 13 points against Gonzaga, and she's savoring the moment. I've been working toward this since I was a freshman in high school. To actually be here and be playing for such a, a successful program, it's just a, such a cool experience that I'll never forget. All in all, it's a collective effort as the Black Bears have gone 2-2 two and two since Simon's absence. The effort will be further put to the test Friday night against a tough opponent in Princeton. We just have to play good defense, knock down shots, and limit our turnovers. Princeton's a very talented team. They can shoot, they defend. Uh, we have to really bring our A game. That game Friday night against Princeton takes place right here in the pit at 7 p.m. In Orono, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC 7, Fox 22. Thanks for that, Ryan. Always a tough non-conference schedule for Amy Vashon and the Black Bears, but as they say, it all pays off in the end. We saw that last year with the 16-game winning streak in conference play. So looking forward to that Friday matchup with Princeton. Let's go to some football now. It is a big night down in Foxborough. The Patriots and the Buffalo Bills will meet for the first time this season Thursday night at Gillette Stadium with plenty on the line for both teams. New England is out of the playoffs if they were to start this week. They have three divisional games left in the season and two of them are against Buffalo. The Pats are now six and five after a tough Thanksgiving night loss to the Vikings and they find themselves a full game behind the Jets for the final playoff spot. Buffalo is eight and three and a game behind Miami in the division. Now the last time these two teams met was in the AFC wildcard round with Buffalo pounding the Patriots 47 to 17 ending New England season. This time around the Patriots defense seems to be better equipped to try and slow down one of the NFL's most potent offensive attacks. It's no secret. I mean, defensively, we haven't we haven't played well the last two times we played them, and that has to change if we want to have a chance to win. We gotta play. We gotta play way better defensively. That's a good offense, and that's a good team. And uh, hopefully, we get to go out there first, get a three and out, and see the punter. All right, looking forward to that game Thursday night on Amazon Prime. That's going to be a good one. A lot of a lot of playoff implications on Thursday night. That's all the time we have for sports. Here's Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast. Jeff. All right, Tyler, thank you. Your full weather is brought to you by Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop in Newport. Come check out our three floors of antique treasures and gifts in our renovated 1800s home. Okay, so for us, temperature-wise, let's start here and also advisory. Across our region, they're falling off pretty quickly, right? Highs back in the 40s today for most locations, and the wind is finally pulling back after we had wind gusts near 50 to 60 miles per hour yesterday. These will all drop out of here tonight, and wave heights will come down tomorrow with less windy conditions. Still, though, out of the west, around 13 miles per hour in Millinocket, 10 here in Bangor. You get the idea. Another windy day for us today, but not too bad with temperatures hanging out near 40, right? Right now, today, high temperatures, 42 here in Bangor, 37 Millinocket, 44 for Bar Harbor. So, you know, these are doing what they're supposed to do this time of year. Comfortable, right? Tomorrow, pretty much the same story, followed by the return of probably 50s in the forecast over the weekend on Saturday with another hefty rain event on the way for us Saturday afternoon. All right, so here we are out there today. So there's lots of cold air just above our heads today. That creates instability in the atmosphere. It gives us a few flurries and a few sprinkles. We've had that off and on today. Most of you saw nothing, but a couple of you saw a couple of flurries in areas of drizzle. That's not going to fall apart tonight, and we are in a drying out mode as all of this will kind of fall apart right over us this evening. We'll get into high pressure for tomorrow. Lots of sunshine in the forecast tomorrow with temperatures back near 40, and then it gets warmer from there. Let's walk you through it. So tonight, decrease. 
increasing clouds. In fact, mostly clear skies after midnight tonight. There could be a little bit of dense fog in there later on after midnight. Uh, most of us will not see that. And then overall tomorrow, a very nice day. Here's 7 a.m. looking at partly cloudy skies. And we'll call it increasing clouds throughout the afternoon. Uh, nothing big rain or snow-wise for us tomorrow. And then a clear tomorrow night. It's Friday night finally, right? And then here we are on Saturday. We'll have increasing clouds Saturday morning. And I'd say by about midday once again, we'll get that rain shower activity in here. And once again, these rain showers could be heavy on Saturday as that front kind of pushes through. It will not be as windy this time, but still... We'll get some wind gusts near 30 to 40 miles per hour on Saturday afternoon. All right, so if you like rain, you're in the right spot, right? We have more rain on the way, especially probably between 10 a.m. Saturday morning and, say, 5 p.m. Saturday afternoon and evening. Uh, we could see another quarter to a half inch of rainfall, uh, so that will get out of here quickly on Saturday evening. If you like snow, you're in the wrong spot. It's just been too warm for that, right? Another round of rain coming for us on Saturday. No snow at all this weekend, and then right now there's not a real good sign of any kind of cold weather coming our way anytime soon. Our forecast then tonight, though, is partly cloudy skies and breezy still. Low temperatures down near 24, uh, with that west wind that could still gust near 20 overnight. For tomorrow, it's Friday. Here we go. Mostly sunny skies. Highs reaching for 40. We'll probably stop just short with that south breeze tomorrow, around 5 miles per hour only. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows tomorrow 38, but 53 with a good chance for rain on Saturday. Sunday, 38. Back in the 40s on Monday and a Tuesday. Another rain chance gets in here on Tuesday afternoon. Beth? All righty, Jeff, thanks so much, and there's still more to come. Stay with us. Big trucks rule the road. They're dangerous, and they can cause big, bad injuries. But the big trucking companies don't stand a chance against me. I'm Jim with Lowry & Associates. If you've been hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. So small, so smart. Hearing aids that I can personalize to each ear right from here. Brilliant. It's Cyber Monday all week with big savings on Ergo 6. We're a AAA family. We found out about AAA insurance um, through a friend who had actually mentioned it a while ago. We ran the numbers and it totally worked. We looked at the statement for our previous insurer and then AAA insurance. Definitely, we've seen a huge difference. Switch to AAA insurance today and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, Geico, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. By switching over to AAA insurance, we saved over $450. So with our savings, he bought more equipment. More money means more practice equipment. <laughs> In his world. <laughs> Why didn't we do this earlier? Why did yeah, it take so long? We're a AAA family now. AAA insurance it allows us to do so much more with our kids and spend more time with them. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 877-209-5384 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on Half Off Dining, and start saving now. The Old Mill Pub in Skowhegan is an historic restaurant and bar overlooking the Kennebec River. Enjoy the atmosphere while dining on local handcrafted pub fare, as well as main beers and craft cocktails, also offering bar and catering services. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, chances are you have lots of questions. Norm Prouty has answers. Learn some tips and tricks and explore some beautiful homes on the market. The Norm Prouty and Danell Baker Real Estate Show, Sunday mornings at 6.30 on ABC7. With so much at stake, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one newscast and the number one program on television. Finally tonight, the Bangor Humane Society is trying to find a home for the last of three dogs that were recently found abandoned in a storage facility. They were discovered in September after someone heard barking coming from one of the units in a Bangor storage complex. Police were called and the dogs were discovered crammed in the same kennel. You can see them right there. They were starving and forced to live in their own waste. A Newport man currently facing charges in relation to their discovery. Now we are happy to report the dogs are now healthy and two of them have already found homes. The remaining dog named 
Dexter appeared on Good Morning Maine today. He definitely captured a lot of hearts and got some love. Catherine Ravenscraft brought him on and says though he needs some help learning his manners, he's very loving and that is a testament to his true nature. Obviously, he's bounced back really well. He, he looks healthy. You know, yeah. this is yeah. the resiliency of Boy, he dogs. just hates people too. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> This is why I say we don't deserve them, right? Yeah. For for it's him to, to offer so boy. much forgiveness to, <laughs> yeah. to people right. after what he's been through yeah. um, just shows how how innocent and sweet these guys are. <laughs> Well, Dexter is definitely a boy with energy who will require exercise and training. Cats may be okay if they're dog savvy, but Dexter is probably a chaser. And kids are okay too, so long as there is supervision. People interested in adopting Dexter or other pets are encouraged to contact the Bangor Humane Society. And that is some serious belly rub going on right there. Definitely got some love this morning. Alrighty, folks. Well, that is going to do it for us from everyone here at ABC7. Take care and have a great rest of your night.